Springtime in Scotland! It's summer in Scotland! I don't know if you can hear me over the noise. the hub of the highlands because we've got to get a few jobs done well job number one which was a shower badly needed has been done so now let's go off and get the rest of our jobs done <laughs> Beverly's gone off shopping um, and uh, I unfortunately um, uh, I, I'm here at the accidents and emergencies. When we were at uh, Tavelick, uh, my right shoulder um, just started giving me all sorts of jip and um, although I've got full movement I just seem to have pins and needles down my right arm all the time. So. I might as well just get it sorted and get it checked out. It's like everything else, you gotta, you just gotta get it sorted. There's no excuses. So it's a trap nerve. So I've got to go and find a very nice um, physiotherapist in Uber now. Mm. massage and I have to tell you it's not it wasn't what I was expecting I thought the neck massage would just be in around my neck but she did a great job all the way down my spine um, and of course my neck and across my shoulders so it was um, over a lot further than I was expecting but again I think what I'm thinking at the moment is I'm just having to have so many different changes of my mind really because realistically I've never really looked after myself um, you know I've always looked after my kids and you know things like that but now I've got to look after myself because you know I've got to rely on myself so much more for everything that we do uh, we've got to rely on ourselves so I've got to look after myself a lot more and it's just a complete change of mental thought processes um, a change of perspective a change of pr perspective but it's not initially I thought it because I'm just not a selfish person you know I'm being selfish you know thinking about myself and 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 that but it's not really because you know, Beverly needs me to be fit and well. Um, and it's part of what we have to do, you know, just because we rely on each other, don't we, Beth? Think of it as a crew safety issue. It's a crew safety issue. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've got to be well. If you're not able to help me, I'm facing more danger. Yes. Yeah, so if I'm not able to help Beverly, I'm putting her in danger. So it's just um, it's just a different way of thinking. And I think moving on to the boat and living on the boat, it's all these things that you just, you think, oh, it's not something that you thought about before, is it, Bev? No, generally not. You know, and um, it's just these are the things that we're just sharing um, with you and uh, just so that you can think that, oh, well, you have to think about this. One of Oban's most striking features is that it seems to have a Roman Colosseum above it. Well, you always wanted to see the Colosseum. I certainly did. Friends, Scotsmen, countrymen, lent me your ears. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely wanted to see a Colosseum. Have been to a Colosseum before, though. In Scandinavia? Before it... not Scandinavia. Before it dissolved. 
Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia, that's Didn't you go to the one in Rome when you were there? I never went to Rome. I thought you did. No. Never went to Rome. But I've been to Yugos the one at Yugoslavia. Yeah. We were there in the week after it dissolved into war. <laughs> Gainer chaos. I know. <laughs> so I'm up in the cake star and down there is Coben. And over there is the marina with Salty Vass. And then in the distance is Mull, where we're intending to go next. Well, we're tied up in a marina, though you wouldn't know it. Um, the boat is actually keeled sideways at the minute uh, because there is a 4 7 heel blowing outside and um, the boat is currently heeled between 4 and 5 degrees up the dock side. So we're waiting for this blow to go through and then we can finally leave Oban and carry on round the, um, the area and hopefully go to Mull, which is what we want to do. But there's no way we're going out here today. It's just not going to happen. Bev and I are in a marina just north of Oban and um, it's just so different. Um, just because we're in a slightly different position, um, there's just no wind, there's no slap on the, um, the back of the boat and it really is quiet. So <sighs> I think I can do with just a really good night's sleep and um, then Bev and I will continue with our adventures. Hey Beverly. Trying to remove bent bolts. But I've got the fair lead off. Uh -huh. um, and I've got the things and it needs a good scrub and I'm giving it to you. All right, boss. This is the fair lead, it's off. And oh gosh, I don't know if you can see that. Just how bent that is. Let's just have a look. Yeah, you can see that now. That is definitely one bent screw. I see my nemesis is here with the camera again. Sorry, Beverly. But anyway, uh, tell us, how's it going? Um, one balance is going well. I've got three holes. Two of them have worked out really well, so that's two thirds. So that counts. <laughs> the one third that remains only except for the two thirds that was brilliant because the one third that remains still has a bolt in it and I've got to drill the bugger out. And it's a big long bolt that goes down a long way and I could be here for a week. And the I who, hope not it's going to be here for a week. And the people who own the slip um, who aren't supposed to be here today have just turned up and they'd, kind of, they'd really like their slip back, you know what I mean? Um, but to be fair, they've been very gracious about it and they're going to go up and see if they can leave their boat in that slip over there and um, let me get on with this. So, on with it. All right, I'll let you get on with it too. Thank you. Springtime in Scotland! Well, Bev and I have just bought this chart. But the one thing you've got to remember about charts is they are only just a guide and as soon as you've bought them, they're wrong. So I've uh, got the um, corrections uh, off the Imray website and uh, I'm just going to make a couple of corrections so that you can see what I'm doing. But the one thing you do need to make corrections is a magenta pen uh, because for whatever reason you make corrections in magenta and another useful thing is a really long ruler so that you can actually find these um, where these corrections are going to go. Well apparently they've added some buoyage in around uh, Oban and the entrance out of Oban. Um, so what I've done is I've marked it in pencil first just to make sure that I've got the latitude and the longitude correct. Beverly's checked it so that uh, we're both uh, talking um, the same language. And now I'm just going to um, make my corrections. There's another little triangle just there. And there's another little triangle just there. And then there's two cans, little squares, just here. And that's them. So that one's obviously red, red, green, green. Green, and there's another one just here. Another triangle just there. Green. What's happening now, Bev? Well, the colour is in. The holes have been re-drilled, as you can see. And I'm now putting uh, marine points on before I bend the uh, fruity back into place. 
So why did you choose marine flex rather than butyl tape? Um, it has adhesive properties, so it fairly probably needs all the strength it can get. Normally because it's wood, so I would use butyl tape. But butyl tape has no adhesive properties, so in this particular instance, in order to give the fairly more support than just the bolts, I'm using the marine flex. It mm. sets into a hard rubber with adhesive properties, mm. so it provides a seal and adhesion. Mm. Normally, for bolts, I would use butyl tape. Yeah, I thought so. But um, you uh, filled those up, the holes up yesterday, didn't you? And, um, yes, I used uh, an epoxy filler and filled them up and then I redrilled them this morning. Yep, right, so Bev's going to get on with that while I've got the glorious job of tidying the boat. I've got two of the bolts in exactly as they should be. The third one isn't as good as it should be, but I'll live with that for now until I get to somewhere else and I've got more time. But we have a tide to catch and so I have to be realistic and say that what I've done is strong enough. After all, in Port Ellen it was on two bolts because one of them was sheared. Mm, that's true. Um, you know, so when I put two new bolts in, uh, the third bolt is giving support to it, stopping it moving, but it needs to be cut to a different length and reseeded in again. Mm. But I can do that when I get somewhere else. Mm. The main thing is, it's back in, it's not going anywhere, and it's reasonably secure. It's not sitting as flush as I wanted, so maybe it has twisted a little, you know, been pulled out. Mm. But it is what it is. Bev and I are doing little bunny hops at the moment. Really, really short sails. Um, we went from um, Oban to what was the port? Dunstaffnage. Dunstaffnage, which is um, only like two hours by <coughs> sail. More like two miles. <laughs> yeah. Bev says it's more like two out of miles. It wasn't very long. And now we're on another little bunny hop from um, Dunstaffnage all the way to Mull. Well, we are going to Mull, but we're going to another, we're going to hopefully do an anchorage tonight, aren't Loch we? Loch Loch Aileen. So we're going to go to Loch Aileen. And I'm, but... work, I'm working terribly hard, so don't disturb me. <laughs> yeah, Bev's working very hard at the moment. Supervising Annie. <laughs> It just looks like that. I'm doing multitasking. Oh yeah, she's multitasking. Anyway, that's what we're doing at the moment. It's summer in Scotland! I don't know if you can hear me over the noise! The mouth of the lock has completely disappeared. So we've decided not to go to sea. It's horrible out there! Over that way, there are three or four yachts anchored 